Hey, welcome back to another episode of Parker's Pensies. This is a podcast where we explore thoughts in philosophy, theology, nature, and life. I love thinking about cool stuff, so come think with me. Today's episode, uh, if you want to categorize it, so philosophy, theology, nature, life, this one's going to be nature and life, but we're going to get into some philosophy, philosophy of beauty, maybe a little theology and how that relates to beauty. But I have with me uh, Tanner Serpa from Serpa Design. If you guys are in the aquarium world or aquascape world at all, you know this dude uh, on YouTube. If you're not, uh, this dude's a, a big deal. He's awesome. Look up his stuff, uh, Serpa Design on YouTube. Uh, you will get sucked in for hours and hours watching him build tanks for his awesome animals. Uh, before we jump in on that, uh, I just want to thank the, the Patreon patrons. Like I say this all the time, you guys are so awesome because you really are. Uh, like I've said before, I want to take this thing... Um, to the next level, I want to be traveling around, going to uh, different professors and and my guests' place of, of work. I want to talk with them in situ, like where they're at. So uh, I've had a lot of you guys join the team, and a lot of you have helped out. And so that's becoming more and more of reality. You got some new equipment, so we're going to make that happen. Uh, if you've benefited from this podcast, please consider becoming a patron. Uh, support me on Patreon. You can find the link in the description wherever you're consuming this right now. That's a terrible word. Uh, wherever you're receiving this, listening to this. Um, and then also you can like and subscribe on YouTube. Leave me a comment. I love hearing from you guys. I right now will respond until things get too insane. Um, and then you can go to Apple Podcasts and leave me a five-star review and a comment. That would also help all the algorithms and all that good stuff, which we might get into here today. So without further ado, let me just uh, pull Tanner in. Tanner, dude, thanks so much for coming on the podcast. Yeah, no problem. Uh, it was interesting to meet you at Aqualand, and I, sorry if I was like a little bit off whenever you first met me. Mm -hmm. I was I was doing so much stuff, and it was just like <laughs> like oh, okay, I don't know. That's kind of a weird thing, but anyway. No, no worries, man. Um, I kind of just like bombarded you and was like, hey, man, I, I like your channel, all this stuff. <laughs> uh, so it, it's really great being able to to talk with you here. Um, real quick, Tanner, you have. At last time I checked this morning, you have 919,000 subscribers on YouTube. Yeah, you'd know better than me. I haven't looked in a couple of days. So. Yeah, a couple of days and you got like 20,000. It's crazy, man. Are you are you full-time with YouTube? Yeah, so um, yeah, current, as of last um, Valentine's Day, that was actually my last day at my regular job. So yeah, now I do this all full-time. Okay. Well, what was the uh, regular job before this? So... I. It was uh, title insurance, so it's just like I was doing curative work, like customer service, that type of thing. And uh, do you want to know like the whole background of that? It's kind of interesting. Yeah, bring it in, dude. I want to hear okay, it all. Cool. So I um I went to school for graphic design, and I have a bachelor's in fine arts. I was working in two part-time jobs, um, and around the same time, sort of when I got out of school, um, I was trying to find a full-time job, but I couldn't. I also wanted to get married and uh, I asked my wife, now wife's parents for their blessing. And they're like, well, we'd prefer that you had a stable job benefits, all that kind of thing. So yeah. I went and found the first job I could because at the time it was like right around when I started doing YouTube. And I, I just had a feeling like this YouTube is going to take off. Hmm. And so um, that title job was just kind of like a, a stepping stone sort of thing, just so I could achieve my other goals at the time. And uh you know, that's kind of what happened. <laughs> Holy cow, man. That's hilarious. You got a job so you could get married. That's right. uh, that's like, yeah, that's like medieval time stuff. That's like a, a, an old love story, dude. That's that's fantastic. So you yeah. you had a feeling from the beginning that this was going to take off? Yeah. Um, I don't know. It was just, it was one of those things where uh, it, at first it definitely wasn't. Like I was just kind of using it as a artistic outlook, so sure. to speak. Like just the kind, because I was always doing this stuff. But um, r really just to kind of share it and I don't know, I didn't really think much of it, but then it, it started picking up a little bit of steam and I'm like, you know what, maybe I could do something with this. And uh, at, around the time when I started thinking that stuff, I had maybe around 30, 30,000 subscribers or so. Okay. And that happened within, um, I don't know, six months or so. Wow. So yeah, it, it's, it started taking, but Keep in mind, I had been on YouTube since like 2006. It was just like really at that time I got serious with it. But okay. I, I don't know. I just had a feeling about it. And um, I just thought, you know, it, and if it didn't work out, then I would have did something else. Like, right. you know. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, that's 
That is wild. So for me, I got started on, I, I just put up random videos on YouTube back in the day, but uh, in 2015, I uploaded this video of my giant African bullfrogs eating stuff and people started like hating on me and cause I fed them a live mouse. Cause I, and this was this wasn't something I did for like, just cause, but I thought about it. I thought about the ethics of it. I thought like this frog, you know, he sits in my, uh, aquarium. He sits in my, whatever you call it, terrarium, paludarium. I want to ask you about that stuff too. Yeah. But, um, I was like, you know, in in the wild, he might get a shrew, he might get a, a vole or something. So I want to see if like that sparks up his life. And it, it did. Mm -hmm. I put that on YouTube and everyone started hating on it. So I turned off the comments, went to Puerto Rico for a year with the ministry I work for. And, uh, I saw someone watching my video in a gym and I, I, and I looked back and I, and I had a million views and I was like, this is insane. I don't even know how to think about this. And now it's, yeah. it's, it's got like 38 million. So I had no idea at all. And then I, I can't get anyone else to watch any of the rest of my stuff. So they just want to watch frogs eating mice, which is what I've, I've done to myself. But it's really interesting that you've, you were like, no, I'm going to do this. I'm going to set out to do this. And yeah. you're, you're actually doing it. It's fantastic. How would you, well, first of all, what do you call yourself? Are you, you call yourself a YouTuber? Do you call yourself a aquascaper? Like, like, what do you, how do you refer to yourself? So like, if I just have to tell the like average person or whatever, yeah. I just say, yeah, I'm a YouTuber and mm. I just leave it at that. But like, if I had to actually classify myself, it would just be, um, I don't know, just, I, I guess a, in general content creator, like I just yeah. make stuff and, uh, try to try to make like a positive impact with with the things i'm doing you know yeah totally well so how'd you how do you you said you've been doing this like forever how'd you ever get into keeping animals at all yes so um when we were young you know my brother and i we used to go outside and catch salamanders crayfish you know all, all just down at the creek and luckily we live in an area where it's pretty prevalent um but it you know, I was probably five, six or so. And we were like, why don't we try to keep this stuff inside? And that was whenever the whole boom with like Steve Irwin and, yeah, all, for sure. you know, all those types of people. So I'm sure that had something to do with it. But, you know, it was we started keeping stuff indoors and we actually were pretty good at it, like right out of the gates. And looking back, it was very rudimentary and not you know, obviously not on par with what I'm doing now, right. but um, we, we had toads and we kept them for, I don't know, six years or so, which I would say is pretty solid for just two kids not really knowing what they're doing. <laughs> right. And uh, I think I was eight. Yeah, I was like eight or so. And they bought me a um, African bullfrog for my birthday and I had him for 14 years. And yeah. so it was just like, you know, it, it just kind of naturally happened from being outside and um, wanting wanting not only to be able to see this stuff outside, but to have them in our home as well. Yeah. So, uh, were you guys always like doing the, I know you said it's not on par with what you're doing now, but were you always adding live plants and trying to make it look beautiful? <laughs> well, I mean, I guess in our eyes it was beautiful, but right. it was just like grabbing stuff from outside and throwing it in there. And you, you don't really understand about arrangements and, mm -hmm. um, scale and just all the different elements of design when you're that young. So you just kind of do things. You're like, Oh yeah, that looks cool. But, um, in retrospect, obviously it's not, you know, not that nice looking. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I'm the same way. I got started. My dad, uh, was going for a walk and he comes home with this brown paper bag and inside is this little like toy looking dinosaur and it's a baby common snapping turtle. Wow. And it changed my whole life. You know, I was like maybe eight and uh, it was called snappy. Like everyone's snapping turtles called and uh, changed everything. So then I got African clawed frogs and we had a knolls and, and all sorts of stuff growing up and I would catch everything and keep it. And my mom would always say like, can't you just look, you know, can't you just, just don't keep it, don't keep everything. And uh, I, w I wouldn't keep it very long. I'd take painted turtles home, you know, and raise them up for a couple months and release them. And now it's like, I don't know the ecological impact of what I've done. <laughs> yeah. Who knows what I've, if there's anything there, but um, I, I just recently started like the last four years, get um, started getting into more of what you're doing. I want, I want live plants in there. I want things to look beautiful. I want what's best for the animal. Um, not yeah. just what's easiest for me to clean. Uh, and I'm not very handy, but I'm watching your videos and I'm making a, a tank right now. It's probably a paludarium or a riparium for some blandings turtles, but I have to watch your video like a hundred times cause I'm not handy. 
Yeah. Are you are you handy like that? Like I know you are handy, but did that come with the builds, or was that already like things clicked and made sense to you? Yeah. So that kind of came before I really started with the builds. I just always sort of had a, I guess if you want to put it as an engineering mind. Like I always was obsessed with how how things work, and so probably not a good idea but i used to take apart the family computer and put it back together and like i, I never broke it but yeah. uh, i always did that and um I, I remember like i was probably like five years old my dad he uh he had a deck built around our pool and there was scrap wood so i got the handsaw and a uh, hammer and nails and i made this little chair and it actually was pretty solid for yeah. like you know not having any instructions or anything like that so it just I don't know. Honestly, ever since I was young, I just had this this ability to think things out in my head and and materialize them, if you want to put it that way. Yeah. Well, that's that's awesome. I'm glad that you're doing what you're doing. There's some things I just can't follow you on. Like anytime you cut glass, I'm like, bro, that's not for me. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I can't do that one. But um, I think if I watched it enough, I probably could. Have um, you tried? I haven't tried. I gotta like. There's all this equipment I gotta get. So one thing that's that's interesting is as you, um, if I needed to put together a new tank, I could do that like that. Like I got all the all the stuff from my other tanks, and you can all once you have it, you have it. Yeah. It's, I think it's the same thing with with uh, like tools. So sure. like once you have the tools, everything becomes easier because you're like, oh, I've done this before, and I can do this and this. I just bought a home with my wife, and so we're like working on everything right now. First day. <laughs> I, I dug a little pond and she's like, can you help unpack these boxes? I'm like, yeah, right, dude. I bought this house to have a pond. So I dug a, a little uh, vernal pool. Uh, it's, it's funny you mentioned something like that because my wife was going through her uh, Snapchat memories and we bought our house around this time, like three years ago. And it, it was like the first day that we moved in, I was building a workbench in the garage and it was a very similar story. She's like, why aren't you helping? With I'm like, because that's important because I got to fix everything else in the house because it was kind of a junker. So. Right. Right. Yeah. First things first. My your your story is a little bit better than mine. <laughs> I'm just selfish. Uh, but so Tanner, you had this idea that that this was was going to take off. I thought mine was never going to take off. I was really surprised. How would you end up like taking off? You said you you had thirty thousand. That's that's pretty big. Not nothing compared to what you have now. Was there one video that really made you pop, or was it a progressive uh, haul? Um. So it was progressive to a point. So. I, I was uploading videos relatively consistent consistently for maybe i don't know a month or so and i got eight thousand subscribers something like that yeah. but then uh i uploaded this one video and i i don't know i guess i didn't go back for like a month or something for whatever reason i took like a, a mini break and uh when i went back it, it had like sixty thousand views or something like yeah. that and that was the first video i ever that ever got like you know, past a couple of thousand because the other ones were just getting hundreds, maybe like a thousand, five hundred yeah. at best. And uh, I was like, whoa, that's crazy. So then from there, I started uh, just uploading more consistently and stuff. And then I, I would say once it got to around 50,000 or so, it just kind of it was like with each milestone, it, it became exponentially faster. Yeah, that's uh, something in economics, I think, in, in a lot of things called the Pareto principle or the Matthew principle. Where like those, it, it's from like the Bible. Those who have more will be given. Those who don't uh, have, sure, even sure, yeah, yeah. And and it's like this weird principle of reality. And it's like once you have money, you can make more money. You can invest it. Once you have subscribers, like, and the, the algorithm does all that stuff. Um, do you ever do you ever want like worry about the algorithm? Uh, whatever is happening, like not not feeding your videos to certain people or not. So it's funny because like you mentioned that in the beginning and I'm thinking to myself, like I'm the worst guy to talk to about that <laughs> stuff because like, honestly, like I just organically feel it out. Occasionally I'll, I'll look at my, like if, you know, when you go in the back end and it says like one out of 10 or like how it ranked compared yeah. to your other videos, I'll look at that just to get like a, a baseline, but I never am um, trying to like, yield to the algorithm if that makes sense like so yeah. i'll see other or meet other creators and they're like oh you know what, what i'm like i don't even know what you're talking about i don't <laughs> look at that stuff i just make content that i think will do well and uh i upload that yeah. and and it's also uh to the point where you you have to upload something that you want to upload because people they'll they'll see the energy is different if you're just trying to feed the algorithm plus it's not a sustainable model yeah 
Dude, that's I'm so glad to hear you say that. Um, and for anyone out there who's who's uploading, who's who's trying to become a YouTuber stuff, like either people are gonna like what you put out or they're not. Um, but if you keep chasing the new trends, like you're not being authentic to yourself. And I know some people hate that word because it's such a millennial word, authentic, whatever, dude. Like exactly what you said, Tanner. If if you're doing what you love, it won't matter anyways. Like. Yeah. If you're doing it trying to make a bunch of money, hey, look, that's yeah, going to be really frustrating for you. I know because I want to make a lot of money. But if you're doing it because it's fun, then it's like, dude, I'm going to put it out anyways. And if it does well, that's great if other people resonate with it. If not, I'm still doing what I love anyways. Right. And I, I often think about it that uh, I, I don't think that I'm famous, but like I go places and people recognize yeah. me or whatever. So I don't know, call it whatever you will. And obviously I make a decent living off of it and everything like that but just everything that comes with it it's just the product of doing it like so if you're not doing it you're not consistently doing it or whatever then that stuff's not going to come so uh you know all about just being consistent and focus more on what you're doing as opposed to what you get for doing it yeah man that's a great point Hey, so real quick, what, what was that video that, that ended up getting the, the 60,000? Do you remember off the top of your head? Uh, yeah, yeah. It was the uh, How To Terrarium Episode 2. It was oh, the, nice. the Tropical Terrarium. Okay, sweet. Everyone go go check that one out. Oh, um, it's cringe. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. It is the worst looking back. You can see people's stuff too. Like people makes a little bit more money. They get better equipment and then it looks amazing. But you go all the way back and you're like, wow. It's not only that, but I just, uh, I don't want to say that I didn't have confidence, but I was just very, I mean, I was a lot younger at the time and it's crazy because I look at myself now and I don't look like I'm 28. I don't think so at least, but I look at myself then and I'm thinking, dude, you, you look like you're like 12. Yeah. Yeah, that's <laughs> hilarious. Yeah. You actually, you don't look 28. So I'm, I'm 29. I don't know if I look 29 or not, but I think that's, uh, what I, why, why, I, I resonate with so much of what you're saying, like the Steve Irwin stuff, like, dude, we're right there. Like I was, um, so I, I wrestled, uh, all growing up. Like I identified as a wrestler. That was my whole thing. Yeah. Uh, but so with that came, like, I would hide all the frog and turtle stuff. I had, you know, all these frogs, all these turtles and people would come over to my house and be like, yo, what's going on here? I'm like, don't, <laughs> don't, don't worry about that. You know, it was like my thing that I would always hide from people. Yeah. And then I, I, I found out about like, herping people go out into the rivers and they look for turtles and frogs and i was like i didn't know that was a thing uh i was it was like a secret like hidden uh, obsession that i had sure. and now i'm cool with it now everyone knows because i got this frog video that i can't beat with the youtube i'm trying to like that's my legacy to the world so i'm trying to work on that well i've uh, never had a video get even remotely that many views so maybe i'll make you feel a little bit better about it <laughs> yeah, <thanks. laughs> uh, well so I, I wanted to ask about like new builds. So you're doing what you like. Um, I'm sure every now and then it's like, I, I bet this could get views or, or you'll do like a, a build off with somebody, another uh, content creator. But when it comes to just your own content, how, how are you coming up with new ideas? And man, what happens when you run out of space? Well, uh, a lot of people have been saying I was running out of space for years. I always find a way to make it work. <laughs> That's right. I don't know. Um, my wife will tell you I say the same exact thing. Like, there's a wall right there I can use. Yeah, yeah, we make it work. I just, I'm. What, when is this going up? Uh, maybe next week. Yeah. Okay. I I can't say too much then. I don't like to talk about things before I do them, but yeah. I uh, I just added a lot of new stuff in a different room of my house, so nice. that's that's pretty cool. But we're working to get an addition built on the back that will it. It'll, I'm excited about it because I could actually design it around what I'm doing as opposed to like retrofitting an right. existing space. But right now it's, it's wacky trying to find people that will do it and material prices are ridiculous and stuff. Oh, it's so insane. We'll yeah. see when that will happen, but I'm still just, I don't know. I make it work. Yeah. Well, so, so how do you come up with like the new ideas? If, if you guys don't know Tanner, like if you, you really need to go check out his stuff cause he's, he creates all these little worlds and they'll use like a, an old flask or whatever it is like he uses all these different little things to make really cool uh little worlds so so no no worries dude um <laughs> how how do you come up with the the new ideas i don't even know <laughs> <laughs> I, honestly like so I'll, I'll just be driving somewhere and all of a sudden i'll just get like a, a spark of inspiration it's like okay so i i always come up with the idea first so for example um that i don't know if you can yeah you can see it this aquarium uh -huh. it like 
it overflows off the sides and it's filtered from underneath. Yeah. I thought about it and other people have done stuff similar to that before, but I was thinking about it. I'm like, okay. So I start with the idea and then I reverse engineer it. So it's like, okay, I got to filter it. How could I do that? Well, I get a filter that goes up from the bottom and I'll put in a check valve. So when the water goes or the, uh, if the electricity goes off, it's not going to flood out into my room and right. whatever. So I, I come up with the idea. I don't, I don't know. They just come randomly to me a lot of the time. And uh, then I just kind of reverse engineer from various things I've learned. And so then with each build, um, I, I learned something new with every single build. So it's like I'm always building upon what I know. So then I have more to reverse engineer from, if yeah. that makes sense. No, it makes a lot of sense. Are you usually thinking of, are you like animal first? Like I want these chicklids or I want, or cichlids, I want this or that frog. And then I build a thing or are you thinking I want a really cool thing and oh, this animal would look sweet in there. So, so it depends because like not a, a good amount of projects I do are not animal centric. Right. Like I, I do them specifically for plants or I got an idea. Oh, I want to put a river in a bottle. How could I do that? And so then I, think about something like that and that would be one where i'd come up with the build first and then i'm as i'm doing it i'm thinking is there anything that could live in this uh, maybe some tiny millipedes or isopods or something like that um, but with other builds if say it was for my bullfrog or for a specific fish then i'll start with the fish figure out what would be suitable for them and um like i, I have a tank to my right here it has silver dollar fish yeah. They're, they they get pretty large and they eat plants. So then that brings up an issue. How can I have live plants with this fish? Because they're just going to shred them up. Okay, I got to get everything grown up out of the top. So then they're kind of the point that I would reverse engineer from. So, oh, okay. Yeah. So, so if it is a build for a specific animal, I start with them and then build it around their needs and also kind of like what my idea of the build would be. Okay. Um, so this might be a good time for some definitions. Uh, there's all these different words. So growing up, I called everything an aquarium or a terrarium, but there's vivariums, aquarium, terrarium, paludarium, riparium, solarium. Can you help us with some of these words? Like what, what's the difference between a, well, first just aquarium and terrarium, I guess. Sure. Yeah. Aquarium, terrarium are the big two. And then everything else kind of falls under those categories. So like a aquarium, pretty self-explanatory, a box with water in it that houses uh, aquatic animals. So it could yeah. be frogs, fish, whatever. Uh, a terrarium, on the other hand, is the same thing. So it could be a box, a jar, what have you, and it houses plants. So then you have all the subcategories. A vivarium is a terrarium, and it, it houses animals. So it's the same thing. It just has animals in it. So if you had a vivarium and you called it a terrarium, that'd be perfectly acceptable. Okay. Um, there's also a paludarium and a vivarium or sorry, I already said a paludarium and a riparium. Yeah. Both of those are could well, so the riparium would fall under the aquarium category. So it's just an aquarium with stuff coming up out of the top, mostly bog plants and things like that, but it doesn't really have any land features. Okay. Whereas a paludarium kind of falls under both categories. It's has land areas and it has stuff growing up out of the top, but it also has a dominant water feature. But it could also be considered a vivarium with a water feature. So right. it, it, it just, I don't know, it's honestly all semantics. Like it basically, terrarium and aquarium and then all these other things, they're just a specific type of said setup. Okay. Yeah, that, that uh, I know it is, it is, it's all semantics, but it gets me because I'm like, okay, what am, what am I making? I need to know. And like, uh, I think, I think uh, riparium and paludarium at least both come from the greek and one paludarium means swamp and riparium means like coast or something like that or like a shore or something i don't know and, well <laughs> so i'm making i'm making this blending one just totally like ripping you off i'm going to give you credit and all that stuff obviously but um and i'm trying to think like is this a paludarium is this a riparium and at the end of the day it really doesn't matter as long as the animals are happy and it works yeah um, well if you're if you're gonna have just Easy, uh, easy way to figure it out. Is it going to have land? Then it's a paludarium. Okay. Uh, it's a paludarium. There we go. Yep. Boom. All right. Um, so, uh, Tanner, I wanted to ask you about like your favorite build. You got so many cool ones going on. Maybe it's one you can't talk about right now. That's cool. But if you <laughs> just whatever the favorite one that you can talk about, you got to do you have a favorite? Um, 
typically, I, I don't know. It's like I, I like a lot of different builds for different reasons. If I had to choose one that I like just all, all around the best, like I think it turned out as close to my vision and everything was the uh, the the updated Firebelly Toe Paladarium. I don't know if you're familiar with that one. I am. That's like that the, one's amazing. Yeah, that I just really like how it turned out. It functions really well, and that's it's just a perfect example of like if you take a lot of time to do the setup and think about all the different components, the main maintenance of it is virtually none. I've done mm. two water changes on it maybe. And, um, I, you know, I feed it every day. I don't miss it. Nothing like that. And it's been set up for a year now and wow. I don't, you know, I virtually do nothing with it and it, it looks better than it did. Other one, I, this big, yeah tank right here that big one i just set up that one's definitely a favorite for me just because it's kind of like a uh it's just like all the things i've done over the years so woodworking the different vivarium backgrounds and all that kind of stuff it's just like what what happens after you've been doing this for uh 22 plus years it just <laughs> you know i just right. love it yeah that one's that one's amazing um they're all they're all amazing but that one like even the size is like something you'd find at like the shed aquarium in chicago or something it's just amazing that that's in your house do you have yeah. to worry about um so one thing i learned getting this house every i have a library uh, in here and then i have all my animals over there and like all the old books that i've been collecting had just mold because i we we're gone uh, for it because they're so wet do you have to worry about like humidity or anything in there so um in the summer it can be a little bit of an issue we just run a dehumidifier yeah. and it's fine but in the winter it's so dry that it just e like it evens it out okay yeah so, we had to get a dehum too and it's running all the time mm -hmm. yeah well i we only run it at night but it's like if we could keep it around you know 50 55 percent humidity it's pretty solid okay okay nice so um Dude, there's so many things that I just want to ask you, and maybe we could talk later too. But you, you had um, so sorry for the listeners, but this is for me here. Um, you, I think you said you had a common snapping turtle growing up. Yeah. Um, and then you were asking, like, "Hey, should I get another one?" Stuff like that, dude. If you can, you've got to get an alligator snapping turtle. No. I don't like them as much. Oh man, they don't. Could, they don't have the personality. They they don't, but they can so one of mine is like awesome his name is brutus he's insane um yeah they don't have the same personality but but <laughs> commons destroy everything too like if you build something for them they're chewing on the hoses they're just ant like they shred everything the alligators are like oh you left that in place that's cool thank you <laughs> yeah yeah that is true i don't know i just for me that was really what drew me to them was they have just such a big personality and uh i actually think I don't know why she passed away, but I'm pretty sure she ate a piece of like the filter and uh, oh, choked yeah. on it or something. That makes sense, dude. They'll do. They'll put anything like, and it's, there's no way you can even protect against it, right? They'll get something. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, that's crazy. Um, all right, so I just had to put that one out there. Uh, <laughs> so, dude, I love Samson. He's probably my favorite one because I I have giant African bullfrogs myself. Yeah. Um, can you tell us a little bit about like Samson, like what? uh when did you get him like what's the deal who and that's he's my favorite is there another favorite on the channel that everyone's always asking about um i think people a lot of people like pancake and well love or hate pancake and flapjack the surname toads yeah uh just because like a lot of people i guess have that trypophobia and they don't like the how the babies come out of their back oh yeah okay what's it called trypophobia yeah What's that fear of? It's like clusters of holes, if I understand correctly. My brother has it. He says it gets like all itchy and whatever. So like the lotus seed pods, how they have all the holes in them. Oh, those still those will freak people out too. Yeah, strawberries. Strawberries. Uh, wow. Yeah, I don't know. I don't understand it, but whatever. <laughs> yeah, I I love those toads. I actually don't. I'm not. I don't have a phobia. I'm not super pumped about them hatching off their their mom's <laughs> back but like the rest of it's amazing and you could get some really cool shots but um okay so so people love and hate the yeah the yeah love love hate um i think a lot of people like henry too i don't know it's just i feel like there's the way my channel is it's weird because there's some people that only watch for aquariums some people that mm -hmm. don't even care about the animals they just want to see 
plant stuff and then True. other people like the reptiles i don't know so i guess it depends on who you're asking yeah yeah okay um does so with samson's tank uh giant african bullfrogs for those who don't know are awesome they're the coolest animals they also kind of just sit there sometimes but at other times they're really strong they can move stuff around does he maybe this is like behind the scenes you don't want to say or something but is he cool in that uh, the new 75 or is he like pushing stuff around? Do you have to clean no, that often? No, uh, it's actually really easy to clean. Like occasionally I have to spot clean for poop. Yeah. Like, uh, and it's always easy to know because if he was sitting on the land for a little while and then all of a sudden he's in the water, he either crapped in the water or on land. So <laughs> it's like, you know, I'll just, if it's not in the water, I check the land and then I pull it out. Um, but I would say honestly for the most part he keeps it pretty intact it's it's large enough that he can kind of move around and do what he needs to do but i, I think i want to go bigger at some point for yeah him. that'd be awesome I'm, yeah i've got four of them uh right now two or two are really small and uh, i want to breed them eventually uh, i just think that'd be awesome to see the full yeah. you know the full cycle um i'd be really hard to sell them because that's like that would hurt me but i'd probably have to <laughs> i can't have you know 300 frogs um but, uh, yeah, I want to do something, some kind of big enclosure. So, dude, I, as soon as you do it, like, I will watch that <laughs> and try to – but I'm, I think also just learning the principles that you use, um, I want to do that as well. So I'm becoming handy because of you. So just thanks for what you're doing, man. It's, it's huge. Yeah, um, no problem. It, it's weird because the, the way the channel started was, um, I guess uh, – what's the word I'm looking for? Like – self-pleasing i guess if that makes yeah. sense like i was just doing it because it was something that i wanted to do but the longer that i've done it and the more that i do it i'm like this is not it's not really about me i know for some people that it might not make sense but it's like it's so um so external in the way that it affects other people that i'm i'm just very conscious about that so i always try to just show the best stuff that i can and just um not think about it from a me perspective but how how I, so like to hear yeah. that it's pretty cool you know yeah that, that's such a weird principle because you get to a certain point and it becomes so much bigger than you mm -hmm. do you remember when that happened was that like after that sixty thousand views or like when did it start becoming like this is bigger than me kind of so thing? It, it was i had maybe 40 or fifty thousand subscribers and my wife and i went on vacation and somebody recognized me so <laughs> my channel wasn't even big at that time but that yeah. was really when i was like man this is weird like people know who i am just like on other parts of the world and uh a couple months later somebody else recognized me at home depot and so i would say around like when i started getting recognized in person i was like this is kind of weird but then i would get stories of people who said uh they were suffering from depression or you know stuff like that and they watched my videos and it really helped them and stuff and so when people were being vocal about how my content was being positive to them and how it was changing their lives and stuff i'm like i didn't i didn't anticipate this but it, it kind of made sense you know that uh this is like obviously everything about it blesses me but it blesses more people than myself yeah which is um i understand it because i've watched them and they're really calming and really cool to watch like i've watched the the bullfrog paludarium the first one maybe 200 times because i'm cause also because i'm building it too but uh when i when it first came out i was just watching over and over because i was so excited to see someone caring for african bullfrogs not in a stupid tub or something yeah um, yeah but but i can see it at, at the other level it's like this dude is building tanks and he's changing this person's life who had you know depression or something and it's just so cool to see like the interconnectedness of, of humans and people care about what we care about or even people care because we care. They, yeah. I saw I saw a comment the other day on that bullfrog one. And it's like, am I ever going to build a bullfrog paludarium? No, I never will. But will I watch this 300 times? Yes, I will. And it's just, <laughs> it's really uh -huh. funny. It's really funny to think that through. I, uh, on this YouTube channel where this is going to be, it's super small right now, but I was at, uh, you know, the, the uh, Aquascape uh, little function with all the YouTubers um, before uh, Aquashella and a couple of the employees, uh, this this awesome couple, they recognized me and they were like, hey, uh, can I get a picture with you? Because <laughs> our children love your mustache. And I was like, yeah. There's, you want it is pretty me? righteous. Yeah, it was. Oh, <laughs> thanks, man. I appreciate that. 
yeah that was uh it was hilarious because i'm like there are people here with like like millions of subscribers and you're asking me for a picture yeah sure i'll take a picture um yeah. and then every now and then i get i get some people this one dude's gonna study philosophy because he's been watching the channel and it's awesome man it's so cool to think like all the i don't know how plugged in you are to the world of youtube but there's like a lot people say it's evil this evil corporation but there's a lot of really cool stuff when you just put your own content out there and you're sincere and and change the world that's, it's wild yeah dude that's the thing like if um it's not necessarily always the 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 uh what's what i'm looking for like the big thing it's like the things that make up so it's like i'm part of the big thing yeah but i'm separate as well if that makes yeah. sense and yeah i don't know man if i can be a positive influence on people who are hurting or whatever then I would have to say it's probably a good thing. Yeah, it's awesome, man. That's huge. Um, so I wanted to get into uh, beauty because I think I think what you do, what you do is beautiful. Um, when you're building, are you thinking I want to mimic uh, what's going on in nature, or are you thinking I want to enhance it or make it look more beautiful as you're designing stuff? What what's going through your mind there? Well, I mean, I go into everything with the expectation that it's never going to be as beautiful or more beautiful than nature i should say because okay. like a lot of things i do you could argue that they're indistinguishable like it would look like it was something just plucked out of nature or whatever but i'm never going in with the idea that oh i'm going to make it better or do better than it's already been done or whatever because it's just not going to happen but i will come up with weird ideas where it's like oh you know what if this thing was upside down and, and the, the land was upside down. So like, you know, kind of just wacky um, yeah. science fiction type ideas and see if I could make them happen. And a lot of times I can. So I, I try to take what happens in nature and do it differently, if that okay. makes sense, but not better. Um, a lot of times I'll try to replicate things in nature, but then other times I'm just kind of using it as a loose guide. It's, you know, oh, it, it have these types of plants and, they'd be sort of arranged like that. So I, I kind of just use it as a loose framework and use it as my own sort of creative outlet and do do what I think would look good a lot okay. of the time. Yeah, that that's helpful. Um, do you think this, yeah, this is a wild question, but do you, do you think, is beauty in the eye of the beholder or is beauty more objective than that? I know we all have our own preferences and stuff, but like... Sure. Yeah, what do you mean? Uh, of that? I honestly the longer that I do it and the more stuff that I see people do or whatever, there's things that anybody could do. And most people will think, Oh, that that's beautiful or whatever. But mm -hmm. it, I, I honestly think that it probably is partly subjective because mm -hmm. when, um, so subjective and, uh, what's word I'm looking for? Like, uh, this is why it's nice to have a script. I don't have to <laughs> think about what I have to say. Awesome. Um, like uh, experiential, I guess. I don't know. Because the, the better that you get, the you'll look at your old stuff and you're like, ah, it's not as good as what I could do now. But um, it's definitely subjective because I, I might do something and somebody else looks at it and they don't like how the shadows are cast or how dark mm. the setup is. Or For example, like did, did you see the tank I set up at Aquashella? With the plants growing up out no, of the No, I didn't get everything. to see that yet. No. Oh, um, so I set it up and and the water was very tannic, so it was brown and had all the tannins and stuff. And I really like how that looks, but I would say that most aquarists don't like how it looks. So yeah. for me, I think that's beautiful, but other people don't. So I no. yeah, I would say it's subjective. Okay, I'm with <laughs> you on that. Yeah, I, I love I love tannins. It's because I keep a lot of turtles and it's good for the turtles and stuff. Um so how about like a like a like Niagara Falls? Mm, maybe it's not beautiful because you see the guardrails and stuff like that. But if you look <laughs> past that, like like I would say the Grand Canyon, uh, Niagara Falls, like objectively beautiful. And if you don't recognize that, then there's something off about well, you. What do you? Well, what do you I, make su I suppose that. Uh the the question would have context then so i guess the things that we create would be subjective ah. but the things like in nature not subjective okay oh that's a good that's a good distinction so um yeah dude there's things like um like caribbean centipedes giant centipedes you ever seen any of those do you, you do you work with centipedes ever nah my brother uh he's more into that stuff would you say yeah. he's a, a caribbean 
Yeah, it's a Caribbean giant centipede, maybe. Um, they are uh, the things of nightmares. Oh, uh, yeah, me. yeah. They're horrifying. And I, I lived in Puerto Rico for a year. Uh, the last night, I'm packing up all my clothes, and I'm I'm kind of a slob, man, so I had a whole pile of, of dirty clothes. And I look out of the corner of my eye, and I see one in my room this big climb into my pile of clothes, and I had Aww. to get my roommate. And so we're, like, looking for it, and we finally captured it and killed it. But they're they're venomous. So, like, if it bit me, i got to go to the hospital now. Yeah. Horrible, scary things. These things eat roaches and tarantulas. Like, <clears throat> I called it uh, its fear's nightmare. Everything that every everyone else is afraid of, that thing is afraid of this thing. Uh, but there are people who probably uh, love them. Well, I know people that love them, uh, but they probably will use your videos to make a sweet, you know, paludarium or whatever kind of terrarium for this. Yeah. Thing. And I'm thinking that's hideous. That's horrible. But yet that comes from from nature. And there's I mean, like so, ugly things in nature. It freaks me out, you know? So here's the thing. I look at it and I'm like, oh, that's a – I see it and I see a beautiful animal. I'm like, it looks cool and whatever. And I think a lot of times like we're predisposed – like how people are with yeah. snakes. Yes. You know, we're, they're yeah. predisposed to be afraid of it simply because it's a snake and anything else that looks like a snake, that they're afraid of that as well. But if, if you actually look – like because my mom, she's, she doesn't like snakes, but – uh, my snake Houdini, he'd be out wherever, and she's like, you know, I don't like him, but he is beautiful. Yeah. Like just the the scale patterns and everything like that. And I don't know, I I just feel like probably a lot of it it just it comes from life experience and predispositions to to look to look past how it looks and instead think about like because centipedes they're I, like you said that they're nature's killer. They kill everything right. and they can't be killed because they're just coated in all that armor and everything yeah. so like that's that's what you see first instead of seeing like oh look at the uh the ombre in the the different plates and you know what i mean dude that's a great point dang it you're changing my mind here okay well <laughs> let, let's do one more let's do um let's do cockroaches so i have i actually do have a phobia of cockroaches and i don't well, I, I get sometimes I get scared, but I can't control my mouth, dude. Like I will just swear uh, this huge, terrible string of every profanity that is in my head. Yeah, uh, it's horrible. But I, I lived in Puerto Rico, and they were everywhere. And uh, I, I had this AC unit, this old janky one that would always rattle. Yeah. And then one day, uh, it shot out a bunch of roach parts, and I realized the rattling was because cockroaches lived in there. Yeah, uh, and they're they're like there's this long history of cockroaches uh, infesting my mom's house when she was young and, and telling me about it and my dad. So it's in there deep. I hate them so much. Can we find, I have dubia roaches to feed to my frogs and I thought yeah. I could use that to uh, like immersion therapy myself out of this phobia, but it's not working. Yeah. Uh, I think, I think you might keep dubious as well. Is that... I, I used to, but not the needs. Not, like I don't need to feed them to anything okay. anymore. So I don't keep them. Okay. So these can, days. can you do what you just did with centipedes with, with do with cockroaches or dubia roaches? So, yeah. Look, look up a picture of a giant hissing cockroach. Okay. Well, here, I, know, I'm, I'll, I, I got them in here. Yeah. Unfortunately, they live there rent okay. free. So <laughs> I look at it like a Madagascan hissing cockroach. And I'm like, Oh, it's cool. It has those, little horns and then it has the same thing going on with like a little bit of an ombre or a uh gradation in its scales and i don't know i honestly think they look pretty neat <laughs> and i think that's probably a better one to start with than a dubia because they're they're super large which might be off-putting but they're they're slower yeah and so you can keep keep a closer eye on them or whatever yeah and i think it's also um observing the behaviors because i had those for a while and uh they're they do have an in intelligence and they're intuitive and if you watch them it's kind of cute actually but they're i know roaches being cute that they, they constantly yeah. clean themselves they don't like to have interesting dust and stuff on them so you see them like cleaning themselves and stuff and it i don't know i think huh. it's kind of cool man this is really fascinating to me um do you think there's any anything ugly in in nature like what like a mosquito like i they don't do like they, they do evil things right but um so yeah, this is a, a tough one because you know I, I study philosophy and theology and in in philosophy uh, a, a counter example to to plato is like hair and filth plato has this realm of things that exist and they're all supposed to be good and stuff like that and 
well, there's there's hair and filth, and is there a form of that? And then in theology, it's like, well, hey, God made mosquitoes, dude. Like, what kind of God is this? But the way you're the way you're thinking about stuff, it's like, hey, that's our perception of it being bad. But well, if you if you look with different eyes, it might be really cool. Yeah, I mean, I just I don't like particularly like mosquitoes at all. Um, but I just <laughs> pulled up a picture of it, and I suppose I, I just see the artistry, and it. it's like you look at it, it's like, dang, it, it's so small, but it has these really intricate eyes and color patterns and stuff so it's just like i see the uh i don't know i guess i do see the beauty in stuff yeah. even that i hate <laughs> wow dude that's cool because i do that with most things and most people think i'm weird because i look at a cicada and i'll be like dude that's a green one that's really cool look at all the I love pattern. cicadas yeah cicadas are really cool and people hate them because they're noisy right but um i'll change i'll change the perspective on them forever yeah whenever you're done with this or anybody else look up a picture of a cicada's face and then look up a picture of a pug's face ah they look just like a pug or a pug looks like a cicada so they even got see... like the the under chin thing. <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. Wow, anyway dude. So, that's sorry crazy. to cut you off but... no that's that's the perfect reason to come out that's fantastic <laughs> well dude that's really helpful it's like it's it's the way you're perceiving things and you could perceive them as beautiful and i would want to say they're objectively beautiful but because like you said with our experience and our prior commitments uh, we think of cockroaches as taking over your house, so they're evil. Sure. But Which, they they serve a great purpose for all sorts. They gut load themselves. They eat a mango, and then a frog eats them, and then they get all those vitamins. Yeah, that and honestly, like the the pest roaches, they only make up a small fraction of all the roaches sure. in the world. So like, uh, there's there's so many different species that live in the rainforest and stuff like that that wouldn't even want to live right. in somebody's house. You know what I mean? So yeah. it's it's. Definitely, all, I think at least it's all perception. Yeah, man, that's so cool. You've expanded out my my horizon here. I'm gonna have to think about that. I'm still getting kind of like itchy. I'm feeling like there's a roach on my leg or something. I'm a little, but but I'm getting there. So this has been actually really <laughs> cathartic for me, dude. I appreciate that. Um, so so we have we have kind of beauty. We have that there there is an objective, and then we're we're it, that distinction is really helpful for me because. If you are creating something beautiful in your own home, in a paludarium, in a vivarium, whatever, it's obviously subjective because you're taking a piece of nature and saying, I want that piece here. And so mm -hmm. other people might say, look, dude, I don't like swamps. I don't like bogs. <laughs> yeah. And those are gross. But I'm like, dude, bogs are home to spotted turtles and blandings like, and, and all sorts of frogs. I love bogs. So bring that into my home where other yeah. people might not recognize that. Yeah. That's like a yeah, a lot of people are obsessed with like saltwater tanks because right. they love all the colors and stuff like that. And I, I think it's cool, but I don't have the same draw to that as I do like a bog, for example. Yeah, I'm exactly the same way. Yeah, I'll, I'll appreciate them. I'll go to fish stores. Uh, the local ones are the best when they have – I love local fish stores. Everyone go support your local fish store. Um, but, yeah, I'll go and watch them. It's cool seeing Nemo and stuff. And then I'm like, oh, that's fine. <laughs> yeah. I don't need – but if I see like uh, – um, if I see – uh, what am I, I'm, I'm trying to think of the name. A, uh, it's a salamander with gills. Tigers. Oh, axolotl. Axolotl. Um, I'm like, dude, I, I need to have that. The thing's amazing. <laughs> yeah. Um, or like a hellbender or something. So mm -hmm. that's really, that's a really cool distinction, man. And we focus on the things that we find especially beautiful. And that's what we're putting in our fish tank. That's what we're doing yeah. in our vivarium. Yeah. I mean, you see it with that, like people's paintings, like people do it with all forms of things that they create you know yeah uh you see his goofy abstract paintings or whatever and like you might not a lot of people are like oh i don't get it or whatever but to whoever did it they might think oh i, I love the way that the colors kind of transition to each other and i like the grittiness of the text yeah. you, you know what i mean it's yeah yeah and and you've obviously you've it's hard to tell like uh nature versus nurture i think you probably have some inherent you know design in there but you've also cultivated your skill because you can see in the videos you're obviously much better than you used to be um even though you're when you started you're way better than i'm at now uh so well, keep, yeah, keep go in ahead. mind that on the videos when you're seeing i had already been doing it for like i don't know 16 years so there was oh, yeah. already like a, a lot of time behind that okay. but anyway yeah no that's that's great um <clears throat> so i think uh one of the things I appreciate about your work the most is the jar stuff because, like, I love the animals. I love them. I obviously watch them a ton. But the jars are like a little mini world. And mm -hmm. I think that's part of, like, what it means to be human 
um, because I think we are made in God's image. I think God is the creator of the world and we're little sub designers. Um, mm-hmm. do you, do you ever get that sense that you're making like a mini world or what, what, what do you think of when you think like, um, you make this little world and now it's, it's, you create it. So you have to care for it. You have like kind of a moral responsibility toward the animals or the plants. Like, is any of that coming up for you when you care for these things? Um, I don't necessarily think of it from the perspective that I'm creating my own world or something like this, but I, I do think that, uh, it is my responsibility to, to like steward these animals and yeah. to, to like provide the best that I could provide for them, which is a lot of times why I go and make these extravagant enclosures and stuff like that. Obviously I enjoy the act of making it and sharing it and all that stuff. But at the end of the day, it's also better for the animals. So it's just like a, a win, win, win. Yeah. No, that's a, that's a, that's a fantastic point. Um, yeah. When I do, when I do water changes, it's like something I have to, uh, I have to think through this cause I don't want to do them. I hate doing water changes. But yeah. I'm like, hey, look, dude, like this is God's creature. He put me here. I'm the rational one here uh, sometimes. Right. But uh, I, I I brought them into my home. Now I have this responsibility uh, t- towards them. So go and change their water, Parker. Like, come on, dude. And I, I like motivate myself that way. Yeah. Uh, and it, it's really helpful because water changes the worst. I love setting everything up. I love looking at them. But yeah, especially the bullfrogs because they're so dirty. Yeah. Um, yeah. So uh, Tanner. Do you, uh, we've talked about this off air and stuff, but do you find like a design in nature? Um, like, is there a purpose there that, that's behind a teleology? Like, are, is there design or is it all just a, like a cosmic accident? I mean, I don't know. I, I was saying about the mosquitoes, like you see all the, I would say it's a design. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Like you look at it, like, like bugs, bugs, especially because they're so tiny and everything like that, but you get them under a micro microscope or magnifying glass rather. And you're like, look at all these colors. Look at all these details. Look at all. I, I don't know. That's yeah. just me. No, I'm, I'm the same way. I saw a video the other day. I'm on social media way too much probably, but I saw, I saw a video of, um, of a pigeon's wing. And this guy was holding up the wing. Have, have you seen this one? And they're showing the, the light and it's like all these radical, crazy patterns that mm-hmm. are like infrared or something. They only show up with a certain light. Yeah. And it's like, it's just a pigeon. But again, like you were saying earlier, you, if you have, if you actually look at a pigeon, I know they're everywhere. You know, they, mm-hmm. you kick them or whatever. I don't kick them, but people kick them. If you look at that thing, it's got this iridescent purple. It's amazing. The beauty and design there, yeah. I think is, is insane. It, it would seem that there's just like, care and intention and every detail on every living thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. And, and also, man, so I going along with that, I think that we've also been designed to recognize that stuff in like it's put there, but a tiger isn't looking at uh, a deer and is like, they're looking at it as food, right? So they see a big steak walking through, but they're not like, wow, look at those intricate patterns and look at the horns on this thing. Yeah. But we can, you and I can, because we can perceive those things. Um, and, and I think that goes along with like Genesis one, God created us in his image to care for the world. And I think that's what a lot of Christians and people who <clears throat> think about Christians miss that, like, we're actually here to care for the world. Mm-hmm. And so I just want to, I just want to say to you, man, like I, I recognize that you are doing what God made humans to do. Like you are caring for the, the earth. And I think your videos also have this ripple effect of other people wanting to do that, but also caring about nature because you're, yeah. you're taking it and you're showing it, but then it has this ripple effect. So I just want to like commend you on, on your work there, man. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't know. I guess kind of in line with that is I think that if I was actually uh, doing some stuff on my website today and kind of like typing up uh, like a, a bio or whatever, talking about how I think that there's like, known scientific benefits at least for people being outside being in contact with animals and right. stuff and i think that like everybody needs to have at least a house plant yeah. <laughs> at, yeah at least a house plant right but you could have aquariums and all these kind of things that i think that and, and it's not hard like if if you understand how to do these things it's like a lot of people say oh how can you care for it's not hard like i i've been doing it for so long and i've gradually built mm-hmm. up my collection and right. dialed it all in obviously 
I don't recommend that most people do this, but I'm, I'm in a different situation than other people. I also have like a highly active personality to where like, if I'm not doing something from the moment I get up to when I go to bed, I can't sleep. Like I legit have to exhaust myself. So it's not, it's not hard for me to do all this stuff. But anyway, um, I just think that it, people will have a better quality of life if they have animals and nature and things in their life. And I, I don't know, to me, it just makes sense. And if I, if I can help people along with that, then, uh, I think I'm doing my part. Dude. I love that sentiment. Um, I like starting with a house plant. Usually I don't say that. I usually say a pet, but I think house plants safer for everyone. Cause if you kill that, <laughs> yeah. you know, you don't want to be killing plants, but it's a house plant. It's not a cat. Sure. But I, I've, I've been saying that for a long time that, it's good for your soul to care for something. And uh, look, I'm not an expert on psychology or uh, depression or anything, but I have heard people um, give advice to people who are suffering from a moderate uh, depression, not, not something that requires you know extensive therapy or medicine, but take, uh, they, they say, hey, volunteer at a soup kitchen, take care of a dog. Uh, and it, in caring for something else, it helps you not consider your own situation or it helps you, it, it helps you with your situation. Yeah. And so I think the same thing, you're caring for this plant, something else that's alive. Um, it's probably the best with, with children, though they can be a crazy source of, of anxiety and frustration <laughs> in itself because it's a human being. But yeah, caring for animals, there's something about that relationship that they depend on you and they're giving you love back. It, it probably depends on the, I would say not cockroaches, um, but someone might, you know, some, a lot of people might. You go on YouTube and people are caring for hissing roaches or whatever. And it's just something I, good for your soul to do that. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know uh, what capacity roaches are, stuff like that. But I honestly genuinely believe that most animals are more intelligent than people often give them credit for. I think that there's more going on. And I don't know, from a non-scientific perspective or whatever, just kind of what I see. Yeah, a lot of it's ingrained behaviors and things that they do. But I just like, I I don't know. Maybe maybe I'm just naive, but I, I tend to think that there's more going on up in there than what what we can measure i don't think you are man i i think that i think that's right and it messes with me because i i do study i'm i'm trying to be an expert in philosophy of mind stuff like you know do you have a how do i know tanner has a mind like i know i do because i i have my thoughts but i don't have your thoughts there's all these different problems and the problem of animal minds is one of them and when it when i when i'm reading the books i think oh you know maybe animals don't have have minds or they're not conscious. Maybe they're more like robots. I, I don't know. And then I go into my uh, my turtle room and I see Brutus, my alligator snapping turtle, looking at me. And then he goes and rearranges the rocks to funnel the fish down into his verma t- vermiform lure t- uh, tongue lure. Yeah, and yeah. I'm like, there's something there, and it's not just he has his own personality. Though I wouldn't call him a person. But like you said, there's more going on there than we want to give. Maybe intuitively we want to give credit for, or maybe other people do, but than the, the sure, scientists I, and philosophers want to. I don't know. I mean, you, you, you have a dog. Everybody, like a lot of people have dogs. Every dog is slightly different. Mm-hmm. They all have these personalities. They do things differently. And uh, I've kept a lot of different type of frogs, a lot of different type of just everything. And, and I see that with every different animal of the same type that I've kept, they act different. So yeah. I, yeah. I don't know. To me, that would that would mean that there's some kind of process going on up in there. Yeah, man. I think you're right on that. Um, <clears throat> Oh, just, just real quick. I have to say this before you go. Um, so I have this little, uh, vernal pool that I built fake vernal pool and, uh, put a bunch of tadpoles in and there's a bunch of green frogs. And so I, I feed them every now and then I think of you because I, I saw you do that first then Greg from, from, uh, Greg's turtle Haven. So now I go out there and I feed them and I'm like, yeah, Tanner would be proud here. Yeah. It's a fun thing. Unfortunately, Wellington is, has not showed up oh, yeah. he left like the last day before i went to aqua shelly he jumped in the bush and i haven't seen him since so I, i'm nervous something happened to him but yeah I, I don't know, we'll see no i have <laughs> the same i have the same thing i have a really big one and i'm always like where's the big one at and he comes and goes i have no idea where he goes but <clears throat> um tanner man i want to leave you with an easy question here uh what do you, what do you think the meaning of life is it's not, it's not an easy question. <laughs> nah, it's funny because like you, uh, it's to, to serve beyond yourself mm. in some capacity. Like, so for me, it's benefiting people with their, their animals and stuff like that. I don't know for everybody. It's some, it's something different, but I think that's probably what it is. 
that's something broad enough where everyone can find themselves chasing that goal in different capacities. Right. Because so like even if it's just you have children, you're serving your children. Yeah. Like it's different for everybody because like not everybody wants to have some crazy stuff like this or whatever. It, right. it could just be something as mundane as be, being kind to your family, serving your kids, that kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, you got people who do charity work or some, some combination of all that stuff. I yeah. think it's just uh, whatever sort of circumstances you have, how can you work within that? Yeah. Man, wouldn't the world be a way better place if everyone was chasing that goal? I think so. Yeah. <laughs> That's an awesome one. Well, I think that's a great spot to, to end on. Tanner, thanks so much for, for coming on the podcast. And dude, genuinely, like you're changing my perspective on the things I find ugly in nature. So that's huge. I really appreciate it. I don't know, man. I'm a weird guy. <laughs> <Can I say? laughs> no, me too, man. It's perfect. Well, uh, folks, that's going to have to do it for us. Uh, hopefully we can continue this conversation some other time. But uh, for now, that's it. This has been Parker's Pensies. And as always, all glory to God.